The world just can't stop talking about NVIDIA. From the lens of AI, global trade and economy, tech innovation, and even geopolitics. In fact, the print editor-in-chief Shekhar Gupta recently did an episode of Cut the Clutter on the geopolitics around NVIDIA. You can watch it at the link in the description box. There are very few companies who even come close to posing a challenge to the American chip maker. And one of them is the little herd of Chinese company Moore Threads. Now, why are we talking about this Chinese company today? It's because the Beijing-based GPU maker, which is often called China's NVIDIA, has launched its IPO to raise over $1 billion. Doesn't sound too surprising though, right? Except that it has drawn a stunning response. The issue has been subscribed more than 4,100 times, and this translates to a total subscription value of about $4.5 trillion, which is a number bigger than NVIDIA's total market cap in today's terms. Yes, the same NVIDIA that dominates the world of AI. Of course, that number doesn't mean more threats is worth trillions. It just shows how wild people's fascination is with AI. So, what is more threads? Why is it named that? When was it set up? And what is its mission? We'll try to answer these questions in this episode of iSight. If there's one thing we can say with certainty about more threads, it is that its IPO response is no freak event. Countries are racing to secure their own supply of GPUs that power artificial intelligence. And with US export restrictions tightening around NVIDIA's most advanced chips, China suddenly finds itself forced to build its own infra. The Moore Threads IPO is a manifestation of that urgency. We'll talk about the IPO frenzy, but let's first take a look at how this Chinese company was born. Moore Threads was founded in 2020 during the COVID pandemic, but also during a period when China realized that it needed to build the latest critical technologies domestically. And the company's founder was no first-timer. Meet Zhang Jianzong, a 59-year-old man who spent 14 years at NVIDIA serving as the head of its China wing. So, when he started Moore Threads, he understood GPUs and he also understood just how far behind China was in this race. If you've been following the global AI race, you'll know one thing by now. The entire world is scrambling for GPUs. These chips have gone from being graphics cards for gamers to the engines that train every large AI model. From ChatGPT to Gemini to DeepSeek. A GPU, which is short for graphics processing unit, is an electronic circuit that was originally designed to aid the creation of images and videos. However, its ability to perform massive numbers of calculations quickly has led to its adoption in AI and scientific computing. For more details on how it works, you can watch our previous episode of iSight. I'll leave the link in the description box. Coming back to the origin story, Zhang pulled together a team of veteran GPU engineers, including CTO Zhang Yubo, also ex-NVIDIA, for the job. The aim was to build a full-function GPU completely in-house. And they moved fast, very fast. More Threads designed and produced its first GPU chip in under 300 days. By late 2021, the team already had a working prototype of its first generation GPU. In the early days, Zhang largely stayed in the background. The company was initially registered under his wife's name, but by 2023, he took full control. He now owns around 36% of the company and serves as chairman and general manager. This restructuring was clearly meant to prepare the company for its upcoming IPO. Now, Moore Threads is an interesting name, right? Where does it actually come from? It's supposed to signal the company's vision. It's a tribute to Moore's law and multi-thread computing at the same time. And what is Moore's law? Moore's law, originally an observation by Gordon E. Moore in 1965, observes that the number of transistors on microchips doubles roughly every two years, while costs decrease. This is not a fundamental law of science, but an observation. And it has been a key principle in tech for nearly six decades now. Many experts now say that Moore's law is slowing, but not entirely obsolete. Chip progress now comes from smarter designs, not simple transistor doubling. Coming back to the Moore Threads founder, he says that today's large language models are just the beginning. Future AI, immersive graphics, scientific workloads, etc. will need enormous computing power. And Moore Threads wants its GPUs to handle all of it. 
AI acceleration, 3D rendering, video encoding, simulations, and scientific computing. After gathering a team of ex-NVIDIA and ex-AMD engineers, Zhang raised early capital from big names like Tencent and ByteDance and set out to build something China lacked, a full-feature general-purpose GPU. AMD, by the way, is NVIDIA's closest long-term GPU rival, but it still trails NVIDIA. While NVIDIA holds about 90% of the market, AMD has about 7 to 8% of the market share. Now, the phrase full-feature GPU is very important here. China has had AI chip startups before. Companies like Cambricon, Byron, Ilovata are all impressive but focus narrowly on AI acceleration. AI acceleration is the use of specialized hardware to run AI computations faster and more efficiently than general purpose processors can. To understand more threads, you have to understand the tension it was born into. For nearly a decade, China's tech giants trained AI models almost entirely on NVIDIA GPUs. NVIDIA had over 90% of the AI accelerator market inside China. And it wasn't just hardware dominance. Now, let's pause and look at one thing. NVIDIA has stunning global dominance, but it's not just because of the GPUs it makes. It's not like if a company manages to make the same type and quality of GPUs at the same scale, they will be able to easily challenge NVIDIA. There's another weapon in NVIDIA's arsenal which isn't talked about much. And that is CUDA. Now what is that? NVIDIA is the world leader in GPUs, but its real power doesn't come just from making fast chips. What truly sets NVIDIA apart is CUDA, which stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture. CUDA lets developers write programs that run smoothly on NVIDIA GPUs. Over nearly two decades, researchers, AI companies, universities, and startups have built their entire workflows around CUDA. This means that the global AI ecosystem is deeply tied to NVIDIA. Even if another company makes a good GPU, moving away from CUDA is extremely hard because you'd have to rewrite or re-optimize huge amounts of software. And that creates a lock-in, and it is one big reason NVIDIA continues to dominate the AI world. It's not like Mode Threads doesn't understand this. And so, it isn't just building GPUs. It's also building Musa, which is its own software ecosystem. Musa, which stands for Mode Threads Unified System Architecture, is designed to work in a way that is familiar to CUDA developers. The idea is that if Chinese developers can run AI models and graphics applications on Mode Threads chips with only small changes, or ideally no changes, then the new GPUs become easily usable. And without this, hardware alone won't matter. In simple terms, NVIDIA has both the body, which is the GPU, and the brain, which is CUDA. Basically, CUDA has become the language of AI. The competition is not just about who builds the better chip, it is about who can build a full ecosystem that developers rely on day after day. Within four years, Mood Threads has launched four generations of its GPUs. They have rolled out gaming cards, data center cards, and software stacks designed to be CUDA adjacent. Now, why did China feel this thing? Why the need to reinvent the wheel, even if for domestic considerations? The reason is geopolitics. Starting in 2022 and tightening in 2023, the US restricted the export of top-tier NVIDIA chips into China. Chinese companies could no longer buy the A100 or H100 chips. This wasn't just inconvenient for China, it was an existential threat. Half the world's AI researchers live and work in China, yet they suddenly have limited access to key hardware for modern AI. Add to that how Beijing conducts its business. More threads became part of China's agenda almost immediately. The company received government subsidies, attracted state-linked investments, and breezed through IPO approval in just 88 days, less than half the usual timeline in the country. And that is why we are talking about Mood Threads today. When its IPO subscription window opened, retail investors treated it like a lottery. More than 4 million people bid for shares. In total, Mood Threads counted nearly 90 shareholders ahead of the IPO, according to its prospectus. Despite being added to the US government's entity list, 
the trade blacklist that restricts exports of U.S. technology to specific foreign companies deemed a U.S. national security risk, Moore Threads has rolled out four generations of GPU architecture. The company posted 438.5 million yuan in revenue in 2024, growing at over 200% annually for three years. It remains unprofitable because of high R&D spending and rising inventory. Of course, there's an IPO frenzy across the world right now. In India, around 25 IPO launches are expected in December, compared with 10 in October and 9 in November. To give you just one example, the subscriptions of LG Electronics India filled within six and a half hours. Yes, that's all it took for the $1.3 billion IPO to get fully sold on October 7. This was the fastest in 17 years among major Indian IPOs. I had spoken about how 2025 is the year of IPOs in a previous episode of Everybody's Business. I'll leave the link in the description below. Another thing to note is that global AI financing has skyrocketed as investors chase breakthroughs in generative models and automation. But the speed and scale of this money surge have sparked fears that an overheated AI bubble may be forming. Now, there's all this talk about more threads being China's NVIDIA. But where does it tangibly stand? Well, it remains much behind NVIDIA in performance. Its GPUs are roughly comparable to NVIDIA chips from a few generations ago. Its technology, which links multiple GPUs into clusters, is slower than NVIDIA's. And some of its early products have faced criticism for inconsistent performance. To be clear, all that is normal for a young GPU company. NVIDIA's early days were also not all that smooth. But here's the important part. Tech parity with NVIDIA isn't the immediate goal for more threads, and not like it can achieve it right away. Quick availability is the target, and China will be happy with the good enough tech which is domestic over best-in-class tech that is not available to it at all. It's important to note here that Moore Threads isn't the only player in this race. Huawei has its own Ascent chips, Biren is working on powerful AI accelerators, Cambricon is a public company whose stock price has surged as domestic chip enthusiasm rises, but Moore Threads stands out for one reason. It is trying to be a complete GPU company, not just an AI chip maker. That ambition, plus the founder's NVIDIA background, explain why the label China's NVIDIA stuck, even if the technical gap remains just very large at this point. Now, the real question, can more threads ever truly challenge NVIDIA? In global markets, highly unlikely anytime soon. We've discussed how CUDA is everywhere. NVIDIA has also decades of patents, engineering muscle, manufacturing partnerships, and industry trust. You don't just catch up to that with one or two chip generations. But inside China, the picture is different. NVIDIA's access is limited. Domestic procurement matters. Chinese AI firms are looking for hardware they can actually buy. So the more accurate framing of the question isn't will more threads replace NVIDIA. It is will more threads become China's default GPU supplier. And that question is much easier to answer. More Threads has the money. It has political support and institutional backing. The might of the state. It has an experienced GPU team. It has a software ecosystem that's growing. And it has a market where demand is exploding. China is building AI data centers at a record pace. And someone has to supply the infra. The IPO is not where its story peaks. Its story is just about beginning. Of course, the IPO is flashy and has the world talking about more threads. But the next five years are the hard part. Scaling production, acing the software stack, training developers, and gaining trust from enterprise buyers. That's a gargantuan task, to say the least. More threads is the most ambitious attempt yet to build something like NVIDIA. And that's why its IPO shook the markets. And that's why millions of investors threw their money at the IPO. And that's why the world should pause and pay attention.